All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. Up here in the top right side of the map, we've got Serral playing a best of five semi final against Clem. Team Liquid for Clem, Basilisk for Serral. And Serral, what? Okay, Serral is going 15 15, guys. He's doing a 15 hatchery opening onto the gold base. I mean, there is greed, and then there is greed. Serral, you naughty boy, you. What the heck? This is a, a nasty build order. If he gets away with this, this is going to be fantastic. It's the semifinals. Winner of this goes to the finals of the, I believe, $100,000 prize pool ESL Winter Atlanta. And uh, I am casting this within a day of it happening. Full disclosure, I know the end result, but I have uh, purposely kept walking away and only glancing at the screen while it was on because I did not want to spoil myself with the detail of what actually happened in the builds. So I am aware of what happened overall in the tournament and most of who won each series, but I've purposely hidden myself from the uh, the actual exact kind of scores, the exact uh, strategies being used in a lot of these games. And honestly, I did not realize Serral opened up this series like this. What the hell? 10 drones to the gold base. He's going to do a Ravager Ling attack. He's going to take the purple gas right now. And he's actually going to go for a, a, maybe not Ravager Ling, because this will be his first gas, actually. But damn, this is going to be a sick start for him. Because that's a purple gas with double mining. The gold minerals are super efficient as well. And Clem's coming in for his first scout only now. He's going for a standard Reaper expand on his side of the map. He had a second... Whoa, he's going for a double Reaper opening? Is that on purpose? What a bizarre build. Double Reaper for Clem. Interesting. Gas does go down there. That's going to be double mining effectiveness on that gas. A massive boost. And he's going to try and bunker the natural to stop workers from transferring? What? Okay, Clem bringing in some very creative harassment. Now, for those who don't know, Clem has been on an absolute tear recently, destroying a lot of the players, especially Korean players that used to destroy him, and he's been beating them online. But we know that Clem has a big problem. It's the nerves of playing on a LAN tournament, playing live on that stage. He has historically performed below expectation. Ooh, drone pool for Serral almost gets the Reaper, not quite. Serral, on the other hand, plays uh, above or, or beyond uh, the expectation of him, I would say, at LAN. I mean, Serral really likes it. And he's even said in the past that he feels most players underperform at LAN, whereas he feels really confident. So he actually prefers playing in this scenario. Ooh, wait, did he save that? He saved it. I thought it was getting bounced, but okay. No, Reaper gets a drone. I like this pressure. Meanwhile, Zergling's coming on the other side. They do kill the SCV that built the command center, but it was able to finish. Depot's not raised. Clem! Oh my god, trying to give me a heart attack. He gets it up at the last second. Now, Roaches are spotted coming out. I like this as sort of an aggressive scout for Clem. Oh, he dodged a Roach volley as well. Even pops the, the Reapers out to grenade. He's not letting the SCV get focus fight. I mean, he's not really going to do any real damage, but I love that Clem is showing that famous micro. The Reapers are going to hop out. The bunker does not sell itself in time, so no 75 mineral refund there. The SCV gets picked off. If he gets a drone on the way out, that would be uh, the cherry on top of the cake for this beautiful opening. Oh, Clem's reactor's dying, though. You cannot afford to lose that reactor. Oh, he barely saves it. Hanging on just barely. Eight roaches, nine have been built. Several going for a massive Ravager pressure. Cyclones can beat roaches, but if there's a, an equal number of Ravagers with roaches in front of them, Cyclones are going to struggle. You may need to pull some SCVs to deal with it. There is a third command center up morphing into an orbital, so Clem can definitely afford to lose workers. But right now, Serral, he's droning up behind this. He's going to try and do a lot of damage with this Roach Ravager pressure. The Reapers are being so annoying, though. I wasn't too sure about the two Reaper opening earlier, but this seems like the minimal bonus investment to get damage done without really committing that much. And Serral now has to get damage done of his own. He's already taken harassment damage. One of those Cyclones goes down. A little bit sloppy on the control from Clem. Those Marines need to get out of there. Those Marines are blocking the micro ability of his Cyclones. Keeping the Marines on the control group is really hurting Clem right now. It's a huge mistake and it's costing him. Two Cyclones have already gone down. The Roaches and the Ravagers doing very nicely. These guys are nowhere near as microable as the uh, the old school Cyclones or anything like that. I mean, these these Cyclones, they, they do damage, but it's just not as powerful as it used to be. They do get spammed out a lot faster, but he's just outnumbered right now. Finally pulling the SCV, surrounding the Ravager on the left side. Biles go down. Good spread. He's against those. The Cyclones are so low, though. He's only got one Cyclone and the SCVs left over. The Ravagers focus it down. Man, this is frustrating for Clem. 
It's just way harder to deal with than he thought it would be. And that's like I said, if you've only got a few cyclones and nothing else, it's a big problem. If you had a bunker and mass repair, I think that actually would have made it amazing. Because if you've got a bunker up front, a bit of repair with it, and the cyclones micring around it, you can hang on there. But not building a bunker at home, even though he knew what was coming. Uh, big oversight for Clem. Ends up cleaning up those ravages that do overstay their welcome. At the end of the day, Serral has droned up, though. He's got a lair on the way, halfway done. Double Evo chamber starts. Third mineral line, mostly full. And he should be able to take a quick fourth as well, using the gold-based mineral boost to get back in a very decent economic position. Meanwhile, of course, Clem, the real, real question after this sort of pressure is, how quickly can you get Stim Marines in your opponent's face? He's got Stim. Shields will be done soon. And he's going to start two medevacs but he's only going to have a few marines in the next minute or so. And this gives Serral a chance to spread creep, connect his bases, build a few queens, get his 1-1 one -one upgrades going. And if Serral can connect all these bases with creep, re-establish that maybe 66 or 70 worker economy, and then still have roaches to meet the marines, that means he's ahead in the game. And uh, I definitely feel Serral has a pretty monstrous lead. Now, to be fair, losing this game as Clem does not matter. If you're going to lose you lose on equilibrium. This is the first map. And uh, I remember talking to Clem uh, just a few weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago, I was saying, hey, I notice you veto equilibrium. Um, what about Radhuset Station? Which I'm not even going to try and do the Swedish pronunciation. I think it's like Radhuset. Rad, rad, red, 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 Radhuset, Radhuset. I, I was looking it up and trying to memorize the way the Swedish pronunciation is. I think it means like town hall or something. And I've already forgotten it. I'm not even going to try. Um, but anyway, the point is he, he swapped his veto to that map. I don't know what his second veto is because it's a best of five. It's a nine map pool. You get two vetoes each. The fact that he left equilibrium in here is kind of wild because this map is very Zerg favored. Marine Cyclone drop is inside the main base. Roach is coming forward right now. The Marines and the Cyclones not able to kill the Ravager. That morph was lovely. Remember, Cyclone lock-on damage is no longer spell damage. It now is affected by armor, and a Ravager Cocoon has five armor. Okay, grab an SCV, pull back. Not bad play by Serral. The Marines try to hunt him down. Two Marines for a Roach. Not the greatest trade for Clem, especially when you look at the supply and realize that Clem right now is only now getting up his fourth and fifth reactor. His 1-1 one, one upgrade's almost finished. He doesn't have an armory started just yet. He's got his second factory building. And you're like, yeah, that's that's not too bad, considering you've been under this aggressive start. And then you look at several side of the map, and you're like, is he going to 8 gas? Is he taking a 5th base? Has he got a big ball of roaches that makes him unkillable right now? Yes, Serral is in a very powerful position. The only weakness of Serral is that roaches don't scale well into the late game. If Clem can find a way to slow this down, get up a big marine tank army... And just basically not give Serral an opportunity to take any good Roach Ravager fights. There are ways to drag your way back into this. But he's going to be doing it from a rather large supply deficit. His work counts good, to be fair. Clem's actually done a very good job. Not missing a beat on his worker production. But he can't afford any bad engagements for the next two minutes. Or Serral will run away with it. Hive's finishing. Plus two carapaces on the way. Looks like he did go plus one range first. Which is why melee is a bit further behind. I would expect Ultralist Tech. Ultra Infester Viper is a pretty damn goated uh, hive tech composition. Third Evo Chamber goes down. I guess it was to replace that one, realizing his melee was getting denied. Nice scout for Clem, slowing down those melee upgrades. Zone 2-2 hasn't begun. Plus two weapons is on the way right now. Clem starving for cash, but he's getting closer to maxed out against a Zerg who's going to go Ultra Ling Bane uh, uh, Viper. Ling Roach Bane Ling coming forward. Good up pickups for Clem. I always feel like I look at a game and Serral looks way ahead, and I think no Terran can come back from here. Clem is a Terran who has very regularly made comebacks versus Serral whilst being drastically behind. The trick is you cannot let Clem just pick and choose where the fighting happens. And right now, Clem is just chipping away, north side, south side. Serral's being on top of the defense. But there is a thing that happens where Clem will basically pressure you and force you to react in multiple places over and over again. And if you start to lose your cool and get a bit frustrated, then uh, he starts to just get out of control. Like, he does this versus every Zerg he plays against, where they're defending, they're defending, they're defending. And there's a critical point where they can't handle the multitasking. Ooh, misclicked on the Baneling and accidentally ran forward for a moment, but he only loses a Marine. Good pickups overall. Serral's still chilling on 81 workers. His gold base is mostly mined out, but he's transferred to the fifth as he takes a sixth and seventh base. Gold base going down for Clem. 
Clem is going to try and take that, secure a fifth base behind it at some point. He's got eight barracks up now. 2-2 two, two upgrades, drilling claws, vehicle armor, ghost academy. All the good stuff's on the way. The marines are continuing to trade. He hasn't thrown any units away, and he has built himself an almost 1,000 resource lost advantage. But watch out, Vipers are here. Viper, Ravager, Baneling push. Cyril's going to go for it. Blinding Cloud on one of the siege tanks of ducks. Another one from the high ground. Planetary should cancel and lift, I believe. I don't think that planetary is going to get up. The Marines get hit by the Banelings, as do the SCVs on the south. Biles come in, but there are more Marines and tanks spread. Clem comes in from all sides. Impressive hold for Clem so far, but actually he's kind of stimming Marines into Roaches and Ravages. I think he thinks he's winning this fight, but he's actually losing it. He chased too far away from the tanks. If Serral gets on top of the tanks, that could be a problem. And actually, he could do that right now if he chooses. Units lost tab there is actually only a thousand resources in favor of Clem. That means that was a pretty even fight for Serral. And if you're a Zerg trading evenly with a Terran at this point, that's amazing. Because Terran has to invest a lot more money in their extra command centers, more barracks, factories, ghost academies, armories, fusion cores, extra starports, missile turrets, sensor towers, you name it. Terran has way more infrastructure they have to invest in. Zerg is a bit more bare bones. Creep tubers are free. Hatcheries are a little bit cheaper than a command center, even when you account for the drone. And uh, they only need one of each tech structure. Their, their buildings are their production. So Zerg ends up getting a bigger bank, and it's usually down to the Terran to kind of outlast them. Widowmind's coming in, looking for some big booms. Oh, the Fungal comes up from underground, and the Banelings get a good hit, but there was a massive Widowmind hit in the midst of that. Widowmind dropping the south side, coming in. Serral seems to be aware of it right now. I, I think that trade was a little better for Serral than it was for Clem. Remember, losing Zerglings, even when a lot of them go down, it's never that big of an issue. Units lost tab, 2,000 resources in favor of Clem right now. That's nothing to write home about, though. Widowmind tries to do the unburrow micro. Not good enough. Blinding cloud on the tank in the planetary. It's going to go down. SCVs try to evacuate. Banelings go for the boom boom. Roaches, Ultras, and Zerglings jumping on the Marines on the top. A couple of snipes go down. Viper and Ultra falls. The Marine starter step is great, but I think this is too much damage. Serral had a fantastic start. With the gold base into Roach pressure opening, Clem not having a bunker was his big mistake. He really thought the Cyclones would keep him safe. But Serral committed hard to that Roach Ravager pressure, got himself ahead, used the gold base to launch himself further ahead behind it. And now Clem finds himself in an irrecoverable position. He will need to play like a god-tier Terran player to fight back from here. I gotta say, though, the fact that he almost brought it back from here, it's a confidence booster. I, I, if this was a good map for Terran, if we're playing Oceanborn or... Hard lead or something like that. Hard lead probably going to be the next map. I would imagine Clem will pick that if Serral hasn't vetoed it. Um, then this would be bad for Clem. But it's on equilibrium. It is the worst map for you in the pool. You do not care too much about losing Serral's first map pick. As long as you win your first map pick, it's uh, it's all okay. Widowmine. Oh, oh no, it's a Serral. Oh, 19 kill. Widowmine, not too bad. Cancelled. Good cancel there for Clem. He's going to try and save the SCVs. Widowmine Bio Ghost comes south. Lingbane tries to jump forward. The Widowmines are still mid burrow animation. Finally, one of them fires, but Clem just was not set up for that push. Almost none. Of, only one Widowmine fired out of about 12. He's got a few ghosts here, but the Ultras are on top of them, giving out free hugs right now. And uh, much like someone who smells very, very bad. I'm talking bad body odor, terrible breath. And they're leaning in for that big old hug. Uh, Clem kind of grits his teeth and bears it, but it's equilibrium. Sarah wins map one. All right, guys, going into the next game, we were just discussing uh, with my audience in my Twitch chat, what do we think the veto was? And uh, people have said, well, actually, you only get to veto one map, then you both pick a map, and then you get to do your second veto. So Clem obviously vetoed the big giant Radhuset station. Serral would have vetoed... Mm, I don't know what he would have vetoed, actually. I would guess Oceanborn, but uh, we're going on to Hard Lead, Clem's second map choice of course is what it would be out of if he had his options likewise Serral probably would have gone right who set before equilibrium site delta is uh is a pretty bad map for terran versus zerg apparently really interesting so not sure golden aura site delta which map gets vetoed by which player afterwards another 15 15 opening for Serral. he really favors this verse clem on and off and I think it's great for shutting down a lot of the cheesier plays, like the, the Double Rax Reaper pressure. How does it fare against a more standard opening? I feel like if he knew Clem was going to open up to standard Reaper expand, several might go 16 hatch, 18 gas, 17 pool. Is this SCV going to scout? I think he is. I think he's rallied it across the map. 
Yeah, Clem's playing safe, so he's SCV scouting, not giving giving any opportunity for Cyril to cheese him. And that command center will go down right on a minute 38. Very tight timing so far for Clem. You can see he pulls a second SCV to the ramp. And look at this. Gets there just as he gets to 100 minerals to start the depot. Lining your builds up like this is so satisfying. I love watching pro, pro players who have their build perfectly optimized. We see a marine queue up just before the reaper pops. SCV hanging out out front. He wants to try and block the third base going down. Serral does not care. He's going two queens. He's only now rallying a third worker on gas. It's interesting. That's a bit quicker than he normally rallies the third worker on gas with his old uh, four queen into lair build. I wonder if Serral tries to squeeze a quicker lair in and go mutalisks or something like that. Maybe just do three queen this time. Drone's going to pull back. Nice reaper grenade. Oh, uh-oh. Ooh, good spore trick. Nice micro by Serral. Injects both hatcheries. Third queen's on the way. No fourth queen just yet, but that's because he didn't have the money. Starts an overload. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, he's going link speed. Okay, so he actually wanted to get a nice early link speed to deal with any reaper aggression. He's now escorting the drone to the third, but it's actually blocked. He could attack the SCV, but the SCV will win that fight. Taste my fusion cutter, says the SCV, and the drone does back away. At least momentarily. A reaper coming in for the drone kill. Watch out, Serral. Hides in the extractor. Nice micro for Serral. Clem just trying to disrupt, and it seems like Serral does not want to just take the other third base. I know Solar or Dark would just go take the other third base, but Serral seems dead set on taking this one. Oh, Clem gets it! Clem gets it! Oh, Serral's going to be triggered by that. He has to send a new drone down. It's already been massively delayed. That is a frustrating, uh, you know, just interruption there for him. Now, why does he not want this base, you might be wondering? I think he's basically saying, well, I want to take this as my... Does he really want to take this as his fault? I think he just wants to get his creep up this ramp earlier rather than later. I thought the other third base is pretty good as well, but maybe he doesn't like getting pushed from that angle with like tanks across that ledge. Third command center build into Banshee behind it. Very conservative standard opening for Clem this time around. Nothing special. He's saying, look, you're up one game in a best of five. It is what it is. See if I can bring out my A-game. Clemmer has been struggling in the head-to-head -head with Serral recently, even in online tournaments. Serral's been getting the better of him. So even though Clem has been getting the, the Korean monkey off his shoulder, so to speak, beating Dark repeatedly, uh, taking wins off Hero and other Protoss and Terran players, Bion and Cure as well. Oh god, hold that thought. That's a big ling run by... Oh gee, oh gee, oh man, his aliens are on the wrong side of the map. Serral's in here. With a vengeance right now, there is a, a Banshee about to pop up. These two Hellions have their work cut out for them. Serral, oh, he doesn't quite get the surround. Who the hell lubed up those Hellions before they went in there? The SCV is finally turned to fight, but seven workers going down. Hellions on the front also getting surrounded a little bit. It was a lot of Zerglings. That wasn't a cheap move. Serral built a ton of Zerglings there. There's still one up in the main base. It finally goes down. Zerglings dancing around. Serral gets a bunch of damage. 10 workers for how many? 22 Zerglings. Cost for cost. It's very similar in terms of the trading. But you got to account for the fact that Terran can't build that many workers that early. So that does knock him down a little bit. On the other hand, those Zerglings did come at the cost of early drones being built. It might be relatively even even after that. He's got a second round of Zergling run by getting ready. He's going to wait for Clem to move out before he punishes him. Second and third barracks have been massively delayed by this. So it buys Serral a lot of time. Banshee's coming in on the top right side of our screen. Second Banshee is still at home, I believe. And just casually pulls away, not overcommitting. I think it's a good call. Wait for the second Banshee when you can one-shot drones and you'll get a lot more done. Also, cancelling that base is always a value target. That is nine Hellions and a Reaper on the left side of the map. There's only 20 Zerglings on this map, and there's very little vision for Serral. He sees the Hellions arrive. The Lings are going to go in for a counterattack, but he has so few Zerglings at home. Clem does see the Zerglings and the Queens. Already one Queen goes down, though. Banshee Hellion joining up in a nice way. The Lings derping here. They should just attack that wall, and one Marine is not enough to stop them. But he doesn't actually commit, and I think that's a slight mistake for Serral. I would have loved to see him... Get a bit of damage done, force a bunch of SCVs to repair, and then pull them away a little bit slower. We've got 55 drones, 8 queens out, 20 zerglings, 7 more drones are building. Queen there with the Overseer getting some damage, but those Banshees have great damage output. That queen barely surviving. Transfuse comes in. 
the end of the day, only four drones go down as well as two queens. I think this is absolutely acceptable losses for Serral. Clem, on the other hand, only down 10 workers, which is not too bad. He's maintained the Hellion presence, which severely slows down the creep spread. You do not want to lose these Hellions, because the moment you lose that map presence, Serral's creep is going to get out of control. He's going to just take crazy amounts of spread. He's going to get just super disgusting creep spread everywhere, and that's what ends up ruining you. Accidental Reaper getting queued up. A bit of a fat finger there for Clem. Let's keep our eye on Clem's upgrades. He's been famous for forgetting upgrades for a long time in these high-pressure matches versus Rainer versus Serral. He's got double engineering bay, one in the wall, one behind the natural, awkwardly placed. They aren't too far behind the Zerg upgrades, but you've got to realize these Zerg upgrades are not prioritized. So I, this definitely feels like Serral could be going 2-0 in this series. Oh god, oh god, Clem! Clem not watching! Oh no, 9 SCVs go down. Just when I was saying it seemed good. Oh, wait, 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 revenge? Revenge? Clem comes in, flamethrower in hand. Ooh, that was okay. You know, if those links got out of there for free, I would have loved that for several. But losing those, now you've got a counter brush timing. Where the hell are your first medevacs? Where are they? Okay, they're, 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 he's A moved them across the map, but they stopped to repair the SCVs. You've got to be careful with A moving medevacs because they'll stop and heal wounded SCVs. Banshees are going to be on the defense. They will get repaired on up. And the armory is on the way. Fourth and fifth barracks are there producing units. Second factory should be going down in the near future. No doubt Clem will be going for that. But for now, pressure on the front. Ling Bane Queen is there. Plenty of queens to buy time. Is there enough Zergling Bane Ling to overwhelm, though? 22 army supply advantage for Clem. Defender's advantage for Zerg, though. Lots of hell that's up front and center. Bane Lings and Queens are going to be needed to use. He needs to go in with the Bane Lings. Those Queens are starting to lose a lot of hit points. Queens starting to run forward to try to tank the Widow Mine shots. Zerglings are there. The Widow Mine's unable to fire. Those Marines going to pick up at the very last second and does save them. But watch out, Serral. Good hold position, Micro. Cleans up those Widow Mines. And 10 more SCVs went down. Banelings must have rolled into that mineral line in the midst of it. Clem's economy getting hammered. However, the units lost tab is still 1,300 resources in his favor. If Serral was on 80 workers, this would be game over. He'd be too far ahead on the economy, but he's only on 68. So as much damage as Serral's doing, he doesn't have that huge four base economy we're used to seeing from Zerg. He still has to shut down this aggression. The Banshees are starting to get a big tax off. Drop on the left side, drop, drop on the right at the same time. Oh, the positioning in the choke point. The Zergling's getting stuck there. The drone's getting caught by the Banshees. Oh no, that is big damage. Attacking on the right side at the same time. Clem's got momentum now. Clem has got momentum. His efficiency is getting out of hand. This is where you start to see Clem go from a good spot to an unstoppable spot. It is frustrating. You feel helpless. When Clem's got this sort of position, his efficiency just starts to get crazy. You feel like you just never quite have enough units in any position to deal with him. He just doesn't have to, have to respect you. And he's fighting in your face, dancing around. I can I can fight all day. I can, I can get headshots all day. You know, he's got his knife out and he's running full force towards Serral saying, get out of my way. Serral, this is not a chicken match you want to play. He's got 2-2 on the way. He's managed to stabilize on 5 base 73 drones, but I still feel this left base so exposed. There's no anti-air. Those Banshees could come back in. One Queen cannot defend that. And Clem, he realizes he goes in right now, immediately grabbing more free worker kills. You can tell Serral's stressed out. He's lost a lot of map vision, which means he doesn't have the awareness to know where and when to respond. That being said, he shuts down the drop behind the natural. Well done. I think I may have jinxed it by saying he doesn't know how to respond or have the information to respond. Oh, the Widow Mines! The Widow Mines! Okay. The Widow Mines finally fire. The Marines defend most of those Zerglings. Big counterattack on the other side of the map. Widow Mines stopping a bunch of the Banelings getting into the natural. Marines and SCVs trying to defend the third. Marines in the third base are several as well. Both sides fighting hard right now. A few Banelings come in! And Serral getting those Banelings! It even burrows them in the mineral line. If Clem didn't watch... Oh no. Okay, Clem was watching. Sharp eyes for Clem. If he sent the workers back to mine, the burrowed banelings in the mineral line would have been devastating. Serral gets a big economy advantage. However, he's forgotten about the Widow Mines. Clem is going to do the creepy crawl into the mineral line and start to punish Serral for that. Serral needs new overseers. He's continuing to try to backstab. A wise idea. You do not want to fight the Terran on their own terms. Five drones going down to the Widow Mine. Infestation bits on the way as well as plus one range. Right now it's 2-2 two -two versus... Well, 2-2's two kicking in for Terran as well. Equal upgrades are maintained. Command center is in danger. Zerglings are going to take it down. Oh, no fourth base. That is so annoying as a Terran. This is why I've often started building my command center in my main because losing your fourth command center at 90% complete is so annoying. Now Clem is stuck on three base and he needs to do more damage. He needs to do so much more damage to Serral. He needs to keep Serral locked here on 67 workers. If Oh, oh, 
The win of mine! This got 31 kills! I think that was its second big shot of this game. Getting a big pack of Ling Bane, a smear of them left on the ground, nothing but blood. Oh, and he picks up and dives over the front. Clem channeling his inner beyond right now, getting a bit of a stiffy and jamming it into any opening that he can find. Ling Bane does run over the right side. Widowmine gets a decent shot. Serral with some decent reactive spreadies, but he's got a group up in the main. That's a big ball of Marines on both sides. Clem deep on creep. Banelings will connect on the right side, but he still splits at the last second and minimize the damage in the main base, though. Oh, okay. Serral with a fantastic hold in the main. At the third, though, his Banelings aren't quite morphed. The third hatchery will go down. Clem says, high ground, low ground, which ground will I drop on all of the ground? The Marines do get surrounded there. At the same time, the third base of Serral goes down. He needs to clean up these bloody Widow Mines. The Widow Mine does smear a few Zerglings, but a great last second split to limit it. Sporkrill is starting to get some nice damage. Problem for Serral is he's only got two Queens. And right now, this is like that Gumiho match on Ancient Cistern from earlier in the year where it looked like Serral was beating Gumiho. And then Gumiho was like, oh, I killed all your queens. I'm going to drop here. I'm going to drop here. I'm going to drop over there and over there and over there as well. And look, he's doing it. Marines on the left, Marines in the back. Another push coming through the front. Uh, Serral right now is stretched as absolute limits. 468 average uh, actions per minute right now. He is playing blitzing fast. Widow Mine's burrowing all over. Overseer's trying to take him out. How the hell does he have the APM to spread like this? I do not know how Serral is maintaining any control in this game. Keep in mind, though, the lack of a fourth command center means at 13 minutes, Clem is for the first time about to get his fourth. And that means his main's fully mined out. His natural is half mined out of minerals, or it will be soon. If he didn't lose so many SCVs earlier in this game, it already would be gone. But his third base also is going to be his main bit of income. Clem needs the fourth base desperately. Mass Zergling run by Widowmine getting 10 Zerglings. A good little stack of bio there trying to defend the natural. Clem attacking right now. He's got Marines in the back, Marines in the left, and an army on the front. Fighting everywhere at once like a psychopath. What the hell? Clem, liberated Biomine on the front. He's on creep against Banelings in three places at once, and it punishes him. Oh, he takes a massive hit. Does it matter, though? Because he's in multiple mineral lines, ruining several right now. And yes, his third gets lifted, but his fourth is alive. Several finds it with the Overseer, but he's just got nothing left at home. His worker lines get ransacked. And Clem also wins his map pick and says, that's all right, buddy. You can win Equilibrium. I'll win a hard lead. Now we've got a series on our hands. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. We got game three. And we're going on to Alcyon. Down here in the bottom left, Clem... In the top right, Serral. This map is a very important match. This is Serral's second map pick, but I think it's one that can go either way. I, I, I really do feel like I've seen Clem struggle in the early late game on this map versus like Dark and then just drag his way back into the game in the late game with like multi-prong when the bases get really spread out. So, I mean, Serral's not Dark, let's be fair. Beating Dark in a, in a, Dark's not the cleanest defensive player. Serral's much cleaner. The path to victory doesn't really lie in late game, usually for Clem uh, against Serral. You want to get the momentum going and usually just get that edge and try to push over him. I would say winning a best of five or a best of seven for Clem versus Serral, in at least one game, you want to get a big advantage with your first big timing attack. Like a big marine tank pressure or your early like first couple of medevacs bouncing around. You want to start to find good trades at that point. Or Serral seems to, to get into an unstoppable position. And definitely Clem is assuming the position of, I want to deny this base. I don't want you to expand to the right because that makes it easier for you to take the gold. Serral, happy to take link speed on two base, fully pulling off gas. And four Zerglings here to defend the Reaper, not even going for the drones at all. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny, guys. There's been this meta evolution where rather than, like, like Clem is like, well, you can just turn drones into spore crawlers. But you can't turn a Zergling into a Spore Crawler, so I'm actually going to run straight past the defenseless workers, ignore them, and go after the Zerglings. Because he knows there's so little chance of getting damage against Serral. He wants to go for the easiest damage to get. The 35 hit point, the, the most fragile unit that can't turn itself into a building. It's, it's kind of cool to see him prioritizing that. But Serral's defense is on point. Third hatchery goes down. Gas is coming up as well. Down here in the bottom side, third command center coming up. Factory is on the reactor, but notice he's gone starport before going Hellions. Does he go second gas as well? He's looking for the creep tumor snipe. He knows Sarah wants to poop it out right now. And waits for the second queen before doing so. Second gas goes down and then two Hellions. So very delayed two Hellions. Probably a Banshee build. Could go Liberator. 
We almost never see Viking anymore, and part of that is because the Zergs are so conservative with their overlords. Look at this one overlord on the Terran side of the map, and it's in a weird spot where you might not even find it. Serral building lots of overlords, making sure he doesn't get supply blocked right now. By the way, if someone can go out there and just take Premier... If you take tournament build orders... If someone could do a statistical analysis of maybe 50 dark games in tournaments versus 50 Serral games, I just would love to see the numbers on time spent supply blocked in the first six minutes of the game. To compare that between Serral and Dark, I think would be one of the funniest statistics you ever see between two top pro players. Things come over there, start to push that away. Because, because like, I feel like I almost never see Serral get supply blocked. Like, it's actually such a low percentage Unless you kill some of his overlords, it, I, I, I can't even remember the last time I saw him get supply blocked. And with Dark, it's almost every game. Dark's got killer instinct, though. Serral has good timing attacks, where he can kill a Terran, for sure. But let's be real. At his core, Serral's identity is a defender. He is a player who wants to defend his territory, stop your attacks, and only explode into the counter-offensive once he's kind of shown that he is the dominant one. He's going Roaches right now. I like Roach play against Clem. We saw what Clem can do with the, unmarine, uh, the Marine Micro on all sides. Roaches are very good for limiting that because they do range damage. They don't get choked up as much in bad positions like Ling Bane. Ooh, Banshee came in the left side. Does get deflected. He's building Cloak in another Banshee. Second and third barracks. Double Engineering Bay as well. Clem splits the Reaper. He sees the Roach. Oh, I like that. He sees the Roach. He also sees no gases on the third just yet, but it's kind of early for that, so I guess it's not a big deal. Serral pulls back that roach. Seven queens, three roaches, and about 20 zerglings. Mm, having the roaches scouted, it feels to me like Serral is going to play a zergling baneling style. I don't think we're going to see plus one range. Because he's like, well, I built a few roaches. I want you to react. He's, he's going to make roach speed, so he might make a few more roaches. Right now, he's defending with very few units. The Banshee's looking for damage in the natural. Hellion's rotating around the south. That queen needs to pull back. Other queens come forward, though. Banshees get pushed back. Lings are there. Ooh, no escape. No escape for these Hellions. They're a bit too deep on creep, and the Lings punish it. Serral. Oh, remember what we were saying in that hard lead game? Because their Hellions survived so long, it delayed the creep. As it is, are there medevacs out? No, he doesn't have medevacs. They just started. Serral has a window right now to cover this map and creep and get out of control. He's got Roach Speed, Carapace on the way. We still don't know if it's going to be melee or range. It is actually range. So Serral looks like he might be playing a Roach Hydra Lurker style. He's already got eight gases on the way. And he's probably thinking about taking that fifth base. He's got a momentum lead. But I really feel if you get a good start like this and you're going Zergling Baneling, you can run away with the game a lot harder because Ling Bane scales so flawlessly into the late game. Roach Hydra Lurker on the other style, it's going to be a little bit more about finding a Lurker timing to do big damage. Now, he hasn't found the gas to start the Hive just yet. As I say it, there we go, 645 Hive. Good drone pullback by Serral. Banshee's heavily damaged. They've got to pull back. Clamor has a fourth and fifth reactor on the way, a second factory, and now an armory. So he's going to be going up into that three base setup. Fourth command center has not started. It's only seven minutes. Normally you don't need it this early, but against the Serral, it's about to go to 88 workers. There is pressure on you. And the fourth command center does start at home. Clem realizing this game's going to go longer. There ain't no stopping that. Oh, the Marines come forward, but no combat shields yet. Luckily, Clem realizes does start that up. Big things I look for in Clem's games is he almost always remembers combat shields. I'd actually say he's one of the best Terrans at that. But uh, it's 2-2 it's two -two timing and concussive. So 1-1 one -one finishes. His armory is really well timed. So it's going to finish in a few seconds. But how long from that finishing to him remembering those upgrades? This is a slower game because of the Roach play. So he really doesn't have much excuse for forgetting it. Has to pick up and pull back. He's starting to try and do a Marine tank pressure. I don't know if this is a serious push or he's just trying to take the Watchtower. 2-2 has been forgotten. That's what I'm talking about. That armory finished about 10-15 seconds ago. He's going to have to get a move on. He does start plus 2 armor, but not plus 2 attack. Ooh, that does not bode well. We know that's usually a sign of the Terran player straight up forgetting. Oh, the Lings are going to get in. He thought he raised the wall, but he didn't. Uh-oh. Clem's combat shield's not quite done. He's going to have to pull his whole army back. Serral is all over him. Serral already had a good start getting the Hellions. 
Now he's going to trade some Zerglings for a bunch of SCVs. A few of those SCVs surviving on red life, but even there, Marine Marauder getting surrounded on the front. Clem is going to continue pushing. Somehow he only lost eight SCVs there. That could have been a lot worse. But there's already two Vipers out, four Lurkers morphing, two twos on the way. And with Lurker range and Vipers, I mean, it feels like Clem's pushing, but if he can't kill a base... He's going to be basically presenting siege tanks for abducts, marines for getting jumped on by lurkers, and that's going to be very nasty. Plus two attack finally is remembered by Clem. Got to dodge those spines. It's a lot of lurkers in a row. He's just going to go for the abducts. Nice. Abducting two of the siege tanks. Now you've only got one siege tank. Oh, two actually, sorry. Zerglings look like... Are they on burrow? More zerglings getting in, being a nuisance. Fourth command center does land on location. Planetary starts to morph. Hydra's being built right now. Remember, the Hydra's do not have upgrades. It's a very gas-starved situation, so Serral starts his Groove Spines. Adaptive Talons on the way, Overlord Speed coming in, Viper's looking for more Abducts. Units last time dead even, so Serral's not only had an income lead, he's also trading better. Normally that's a disaster, but this is not a Ling Bane style, it is a Lurker style, and I'd love for him to just go hit a timing right now. Serral is spending a lot of money on upgrades, but if he can force a fight with 2-2, two -two, maybe 10 Lurkers, I don't think Clem can get an answer up in time. He's building two tanks at a time, Actually, wow, his tank production's been way better than I gave him credit for. He's already back up to seven tanks. So Clem's actually done pretty good on that anti-lurker force. He's got a ghost academy and a few more barracks building as well. That's going to take him to seven barracks. Not the normal eight, but not bad either. Units lost time but is in favor of Clem a little, but he's got to be cautious. Oh, Clem! Keep it in your pants, mate. The way he just runs in and out of splash damage, like, this is a thing that Clem does that gives me a heart attack every time I see it. This is why i got to say, do not copy Clem. If you guys are a StarCraft player out there who wants to be inspired, be inspired, but do not play like Clem. The way he micros is so dangerous, and it only works because he's so bloody fast. Roach Ravager come in, get a few tanks, pull in, pull out. Not a bad move. Mass Overlord getting ready. Okay, this is funny. Serral's been doing this a lot. Whenever he plays Lurkers, I always say he needs to hit a Lurker Viper timing. He never does it. He always goes for the Mass Lurker drop. The last five, six times I've seen him play... Whereas, like, I know Dark, a laser, a few other players, they love to rush the frontal lurker timing. He used to do it as well. But he's taking damage. His purple gas base gets denied. Yes, Cyril's on 10 gas right now. He loads up a massive drop. He moves over there. Uh, Clem, he's moving north. We've got more command centers building. Sensor towers, 2-2 two, two finally finishing. Plus one melee, plus three carapace starting. And what the hell? The Vikings come down there. They sense the drop. The Zergling sees it. Cyril's like, are you kidding me? How did you know I was going to do this? Now he tries to go back in, but oh god, oh god. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. You don't want to lose that. There's three Hydras in there. Okay. He's going to lose maybe one Overlord, but the Hydras will take out a Viking in return. Ends up being a good trade for Serral, but because these minerals are here, he doesn't really get much done. Is He could siege the Worker line from there. It's not a bad idea to send a Lurker, try and pick off some units. Nidus Worms on the way for Serral. Serral's army is expiring, guys. This is one of the advantages. I mean, well... The lurkers, the lurkers kind of hit their expiry date when there's a lot of ghosts and tanks out. There's still only lots of tanks, only one ghost. 3-3 three is on the way for Terran. He managed to get concussive shells right on time now as he started building more marauders. Fusion core and a second starport on the way as well. Clem Mackering pretty darn smooth. Several definitely not really showing killer instinct. He's been very much waiting to receive Clem's attacks. And I'd normally say, well, this is where Clem unsieges and goes pushes and throws his army away and loses the game, but he's not. He's putting four command centers. Clem is actually 100% committing to the Iron Bank right now, which is very impressive. Oh, a couple of SCVs taking damage. Not quite dying, though. Lurker going to be a nuisance. Over here in the middle, Mass Marine moving forward. Vipers are there. you got to watch out for those parasitic bombs and abducts. Hydras do not have muscular augments. It's just started. Blinding Cloud goes down, but not really being all that effective. Oh, do not, do not go into that little choke point, Serral. Down in the bottom, we've got more Lurkers waiting. I think he's going to wait for the Planetary to morph, and then he's going to dive on it with these Lurkers, potentially. Serral going for Burrow, Hydra, Ling, Bane, Viper. He's got a single Infestor out. Burrowed Infestor's catching your opponent is always massive. Overseer tries to get in. Viking Turret says, no way, Jose. Shuts that down. Marine's going to pull back. I love that I've been going back into my arc of using 90s sayings. No way, Jose. Wow, this army is the bomb. Um, I, I, do you guys have any old-timey sayings? Hit me up with them. I'll try to incorporate them in my casting. 
in case it wasn't cringeworthy enough. Uh, Ling Bane Hydra coming in. Nice blinding cloud, but good pullbacks. You do not want to go into these choke points. Command centers are there as well. How many orbitals is he at? Five? He's about to be at six, but three more command centers building. Well on his way to the Iron Bank. Clem setting himself up for the late game. Spire only now starting. I always feel that in these sort of games, you've got so much bank, there is room for Zerg to attack earlier and, and, and you know, either, either swarm and trade and overwhelm. Don't let Clem get these bases up or go Broodlords. And the thing is, I always criticize Sarah for this. I say he's got no killer instinct. He's letting his opponent back in the game, his lead slipping away. And then almost without fail, he just out trades his opponent. He finds these really awesome fights. And you're like, oh, he's actually trading really well. But this game, that's not the case just yet. Nidus Worm in the main on top of the Siege Tank is actually genius. Oh, Clem didn't notice. Okay, he notices now. Oh, you know what? This might actually be a bit of a trap. He does try to split the Lurkers up, but Clem scrambles back to deal with it very well. Serral does pop a few Lurkers back inside. A bunch of them die. I like the attack on the front at the same time. But two tanks behind the Planetary. Ooh, Clem pretty well sieged up on many different fronts. He's got to kill the Command Center. Okay, barely gets it. But Clem immediately floats the new one over. I don't think he's too bothered by losing that. And he's up to eight orbitals. The Iron Bank is complete, ladies and gentlemen. Clem has the ultimate late game setup. He is almost maxed with over a thousand minerals and eight orbitals. The longer this game goes, the better it is now for Clem. Clem's got vehicle weapons, vehicle armor. He just has to defend, survive, keep taking one new base at a time. And Serral now has pressure on him. Serral actually needs to fully transfer to this base and this base in the top left. But it's been a hot minute since we saw this slower pace of Zerg versus Terran, where the Zerg has to go mine out bases on the other side of the map. So even though Serral's had a lead in this game, he might not realize just how many command centers have been built by Clem and how much Clem's playing to the late game. Clem going against his image, not being the aggressive attacking boy. He's actually going to try to turtle up. Command center goes down there. No cancel on that. Planetary will go down as well. A lot of SCVs are undoubtedly going to fall here. Serral takes out a few command centers there. Not too bad. That was actually pretty juicy. He's killed two command centers, two planetaries this game. The problem, of course, is that alone is not enough. Units lost tab shows a massive advantage for Clem. Trading at least 50% more efficient than Serral. He's got the medevac energy upgrade on the way as well. He's denying the overseers, so Nidus Worms can't keep going up. Changeling will try to get in there, but the Viking's going to land. Going to clean that one up once again. Gets rid of the Changeling as well to make sure he doesn't forget that. Pulls a few SCVs. This is going to be a weird situation. I really feel, yeah, serral has got to mine this base out. If he can transfer workers there and there, it's going to force Clem to venture out of the map, and that's where he can find these engagements. Oh, this infester camping on the left side. A few more of those burrowed infestors could be game ending. We've seen what those can do. Liberator Harass starting up right now. Clem's going to come in. Liberators on all sides. Oh, he's being really annoying. Three Liberators at once? Oh, Clem, you dirty boy. Libranger's finished as well. He doesn't have any attack upgrades on the Liberators. You don't really need those versus Zerg. They're going to be help more helpful versus Ultras, but not that much against anything else. Drones get pulled away there. Vipers come forward. Abduct does go down. On the right side, it looks like those drones got pulled away. Liberator is in behind the natural. That's going to be annoying as well. Liberator on the right side does get cleaned up by the Queens. Nice defense by several. An annoying thing to deal with. I always complain about that being a way to abuse old men is just queue up Liberators everywhere and watch the Zerg fall apart because they're an old man. Doesn't work against Serral. Um, apparently, he's, he's he's the goat. People give him that nickname for some reason. It, it turns out a bit of Liberator S is not going to cut it there. It's interrupting the mining. It's keeping Serral busy. It is being a distraction. And you know what? He re-sieges over there as well. He's actually being a proper, proper D-head as Clem. Big Ling Bane Hydra Army on the left. There's a Liberator, a couple of tanks, and two Planetaries. There's a lot of command centers that could be picked off, but one of the Vipers goes down to the turrets, and a duct on a siege tank was nice. Oh, man, the Baneling's trying to get on these command centers. He's trying to block both Planetaries at once. He does get one of the Planetaries, but the other one getting repaired. It looks like he does keep the command center alive. One Orbital went down. If he can save these two, though, that's one command center, one Planetary for a giant Zerg army. Trading not looking too terrible for Serral. But he's going to need better than that if he's not able to mine these forward bases out. He's not taking the rich gas base of Clem. He's not mining that base there. He's having to use Vipers to clean up Liberators, which is frustrating. Finally grabs that one on the right side. Greatest Spires on the way as well as plus three melee. Is there the chance for a Broodlord swap? Right now, there is 10 Libs, 10 Tanks, 14 Marines, 3 Ghosts, 2 Vikings. Clem is literally dead if Broodlords show up. He's got two factories on uh, Tech Labs. 
I don't know if he has one on a reactor or not. No, this one doesn't even have an add-on. Broodlords is actually a game winner right now. Serral doesn't feel that way, but there is nothing that shoots up except a handful of ghosts. There's way too many siege tanks. This is an anti-lurker, anti-hydra, anti-banling army. And Serral has not picked up on that just yet. I like that he's trying to trade these lurkers out to get some harassment. He does cancel a command center there. The marines do catch him. Nice dodge by Clem as well. And Fest is still hanging out behind that base, but I think that's base almost in turret in vision. Attack. Lurkers do force a pick up on the command center. Down in the bottom, new Nidus Worm goes up behind the base. Big attack, big attack! Blinding Cloud of Duck comes in. He grabs a Liberator kill, but otherwise has to fall back. Not able to attack there. If he came from both ramps, maybe. The Infest is unable to find those grabs. Serral, he, he's kind of like, what the hell, man? Why are you turtling so hard? Clem, somehow, I've always said his biggest weakness is the fact that he, the man doesn't know how to waistband it. He's, he's permanently aroused, and normally he can't contain himself. He just attacks when he should defend. But this time around, he's just turtling. He's embracing a style that is not natural to him at all. And he's actually starting to stop everything Serral's doing. If Serral refuses to go for a Broodlord swap, it's going to be tough. And now that there's five or six Vikings out, there is the beginnings of some anti-air there. Lurker Rath still being annoying behind the base. Siege tank and the turret will take care of it. Nidus Worm goes up defensively. Serral has a massive, massive bank. But Clem is mega turtling, and he's not making Broodlords nor mining the front bases. This could cost him in the long run. I still think that massive bank means one or two good fights and Clem's dead though. Watch out, Clem. Blinding Cloud on the tanks. Nice of Ducks getting a few of these Liberators out of siege mode, but there's actually not enough Hydras to clear through the remaining Libs, I don't think. Planetary will get taken out by those Banelings. Hydras have all been cleared. Zergling surrounding some of these units, but way too many Liberators. Ooh, Corruptors are now being built. Corruptors are the counter to big, heavy Liberator count armies. But he might be going into them a little bit too late. Is queuing up the air upgrades on that Greatest Spire one at a time. Lurker Harass continuing to be frustrating on the left side. Liberator Harass now bouncing across the map. Clem will explode over there. Clem had a terrible start to this game, guys. And he is showing Maru-esque knowledge of when to attack and when to defend. He played highly aggressive when he had momentum on hard lead. This time around, he realized he had a bad early game. He played Mega Turtley. Now, after crushing an army, he's going to push, deny a base. He's got to be careful, though. He's deep on creep. Don't go too far, mate. Do not go too far. A few parasitic bombs, a bunch of corruptors getting on top, and your day is going to be ruined. Serral is not even trying to hide his intention. He's just going to YOLO right on top of that army. The hot pickup on the ghost is good. The Vikings trying to start a step against the corruptors. He's trying to pull back right now. A massive chase on the, the ropes. Clem right now. He's going to lose a building command center. He's going to lose that whole mineral line by the looks of it. Those SCVs getting clawed down. A few of them do escape. 24 workers going down. Clem's economy down to 38 SCVs. This should be a disaster for Clem, but it didn't happen early enough. He still has the Iron Bank, 10 orbital command centers, 38 SCVs. All he needs is workers to mine gas. He can use mules for everything else. This does not matter at all. As long as Clem doesn't go below 40 workers, he can keep mining at a very good rate. And all it means is he can replace it with army. This is actually bad for Serral if he doesn't manage to overwhelm and deny either the gold base. Or maybe if he could get rid of these two bottom bases, that'd be huge. Serral finally takes the forward base, but it's too late. At this point, Clem is denying that mining. Oh, Fungal! He got a Fungal on the Ghost! He's trying to get on top! The hot pickup saves some of the Ghosts there, though. Nice save. Corruptors getting on top of the Liberators. This is a big attack for Serral. Watch out for the Ghost, though. The snipes on the Corruptors could be big. Mass Corruptor cleaning the Libs up. The Ling Bane comes back in to defend them from the Ghost, but watch out! The snipes! The snipes are massive! Absolutely massive snipes coming in! So many Corruptors just went down. 20 Corruptors! Oh, Serral took a good fight, and then he stayed too long. He got a bit excited, and he just threw away a ton of resources. 45,000 resources lost for Serral, 30,000 for Clem. Serral is not uh, being allowed to mine from this base. Clem denying it. Clem's only on 27 workers. He is rebuilding workers, which is absolutely what he should do, but he's using mules to keep up his income anyway. He's got more mining. If you give a Terran time to build the Iron Bank and you don't leverage the resource advantage early enough, it gets really tough for Zerg. Serral still has 6,000 more resources in the bank, but that ain't gonna last. He's mining less money than Clem, and he's being less efficient. The Lurkers aren't finding that much, and Ultra Cavern goes now down. A bit of a sign of desperation in Ultra at this stage. There are 18 Vikings out, which is mad. Guess that's Clem's main answer to this heavy Corruptor force, is I'm actually gonna fight you with these boys. He's got 2-3 on his upgrades versus just 2-1 for Zerg. So the Vikings scale pretty damn well versus the Corruptors, 
The reason you don't see this is Vikings get destroyed by Fungal Parasitic Bomb. But Clem is saying, that's okay, I got you covered. These ghosts are going to EMP those spellcasters before they get anywhere near there. I think Clem is realizing if he wants to be able to win a tournament, he needs to play both styles. And for a long time, he was a really crap turtley player. Like, his skill level with turtling was so much worse than being aggressive. But what I'm impressed with is, like, at no point do I see him just F2-ing his whole army to one spot. He's pre-spreading. He's putting Widow Mines out. He's putting Libs out, Turrets. It's like all these little details of layering his defense across the map is quite impressive. Despite that, Serral's still got a massive Ling Bane army, four Ultras, three Infestors, two Vipers. If he can sneak an Infestor in there, that would be massive. More Command Centers building for Clem. It's a lot of money to be putting into Command Centers right now. Mass Ling run by comes in. Oh, oh, okay. One of those does get burrowed. Ling's not able to get too much. Infestor. Oh, he tries to throw a Fungal, but the Snipe gets him. Widowmine does come in. Another one lands on the Ultra. Nothing too impactful. Command Center's getting denied right now. Corruptor's coming in. Oh, man. If he could land some spells, this would be game-changing. But those Vikings are fearsome. 23 Vikings against 13 Corruptors. Who the hell goes Mass Viking in the late game? Parasitic Bomb lands. It only gets a little bit of damage. Another one goes out. These Parasitic Bombs are big. That was big damage. Very big. Vikings are a fragile unit. They do really well if they don't get hit by spells. But if they get hit by Storm against Protoss, Fungal Parasitic Bomb against Zerg, they do crumble. And then Corruptors actually do okay. Now, he's got 11 Corruptors, though. Still against 20 Vikings. The Viking Firepower will crush them in a head-to-head -head fight. Bio Ghost Mine coming in. It's mostly Ghosts of Vikings, Mines, and a few Libs. Serral trying to break this position. He does get a few command centers cancelled. Fungal landing! Big Fungal on the Vikings. The Corruptor's trying to jump on top. Baneling's coming forward to deal with the Ghost right now. Can he get on top of those Ghosts? He doesn't have any Overseers. Remember, the Vikings are killing the Overseers as well as the Corruptors. The Corruptors get wrecked in that Viking fight. That's the second horrendous Corruptor fight that Serral's taken this game. 34 Corruptors have gone down for what? 22 Vikings, and the Spellcasters added a lot of those Viking kills in there, not to mention the Hydras earlier on. Widowmine does friendly fire on the Siege Tank a little bit. Zerglings find themselves a Siege Tank, but they get pushed back there. The Ghosts, the Tanks, covering everything. Units lost to have 21,000 resources in favor of Clem. He's simply being too efficient right now. It was aggressive efficiency that got him a massive advantage on hard lead. But here on Alcyon, several second map pick. Clem is fighting back with a super turtley style. I've got to bring it back to the fact that Serral both did not steal these resources and he did not make uh, Broodlords. You've got, to, you've got to do one of those moves. Break him with a, a Broodlord swap earlier when he doesn't have all the defenses and the anti-air or go for that. Oh, big Widow Mine! Big Widow Mine! Oh, the Ling Bane though! If they get the Ghost to be massive, but he just can't get Infestors in range. Massive Parasitic Bomb on the Vikings. I don't think there's enough Corruptors to beat that Viking count, though. Actually, it's pretty close. The Corruptors are doing pretty well. You've got to pull back before the Ghosts punish you. you got to get out of there, Serral. You cannot stay to get sniped. Corruptors quickly pulling back. Units lost tab still very, very much in the favor of Clem. But 20,000 resources, is that enough? If Serral can break in with the next wave, stop him taking this bottom right base. Clem doesn't have that many minerals left to mine. He's got a few patches spread across these bases. If Serral, I mean, he's got a bit of mining himself as well. Serral's mining a lot more. If he can deny this base one more time, I think he wins this game. I think Serral, even after taking so long to do it and being so cost inefficient, I think he can do this. And Festa's trying to sneak in from behind one good fungal and it's game over. Is Clem, you lose the ghost, you lose this position, you lose the new command center floating in, then you're done. You cannot replace your army. Serral is maxing back out. Serral has a worker advantage. I can't believe it. Serral... Letting this Clem Turtle for so long make so many orders, but he gets the fungal! He gets the fungal, but wait, no! The Medivacs boost in and save it. They save the ghost. Parasitic Bomb on a Viking. Corruptors cleaning up the libs. He's got to chase him down. The Corruptors will clean up all of the Liberators on the right side. The Lings and the Ultras are getting on top, but there's no Overseers left. That's the problem. The ghosts pull back. There's no way to spot them. The Corruptors just killed so many Liberators. I think that's a game-winning move. He is going to, I think, force this command center to lift. He needs more Overseers. Serral does not have Overseers on the front right now. I get both players are very poor, but Serral needs Overseers. One more attack like that, but he needs two Fungals on the Ghosts. Four seconds of Disable is not long enough. You need more than that. He's running in. An Infestor right there. If these get scanned and he loses these three double Fungal Infestors, that's a huge problem. Serral needs that Fungal and he needs it now. The Widow Mines are about to come off cooldown though. He's going for it. He's going for it. Fungal on the Medivax is actually super sick. The Corruptors will be able to finish those off. He's chaining the Fungal on the Medivax. 
three, four medivacs go down. No, two of them do escape. Only three medivacs go down, but 14 SCVs in the command center. Clem is dead. He's done for. He's got a few mineral patches left getting muled, but look at that. The Ling Ultra denies it. Serral's still got that base in the bottom right mining, and he's got a massive standing army. Snipes on the Corruptors. You've got to watch out for those. Clem's snipes on the Corruptors have been absolutely goated. There is a big tank line back here. Serral thinks twice and says, okay, maybe don't chase. Zerglings into Widow Mines, Ultras into Tanks. He's got to heal those Ultras up. I mean, Serral's income is still not massive. He's got to transfer workers down. He's got 43 workers, and they're all kind of mining off just a few patches. He's got to have this base fully saturated. Why is this base not mining? That is, uh, uh, you know, should be 100% mining. Command Center is going to try to sneak up there, but there is a Lurker denying it, which is great for Serral. Serral's at double the army supply. Clem right now is playing Mule Man. Now, if, if this was... 2010 season two of starcraft 2 ever wings of liberty i would say well terran's still gonna win because mules are really op and they're unfair um i was a very ragey very dumb player who didn't know much about real-time strategy games in 2010 <laughs> if clem uh, manages to even s secure a base that would be a miracle he's at half the army supply oh 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 widow mine drop it's it's not bad okay one of them fires the other one didn't actually fire there nine drone kills though pretty slick i don't think it matters because sarah doesn't have that many mineral patches to mine from anyway nice oh watch out sarah with the miss micro oh god oh god oh god the widow mine's getting some pretty juicy hits those mules mine a bit of resources then the command center is forced to lift clem basically has to do this over and over he can't actually put our cvs down there just drop mules and try to steal the minerals and defend from the cliff. Tank turret ghost with a couple widow mines. That's a sexy setup. How do you break this? I think you have to attack from the right. Fungal, get on top, like from the right with Ultralink. If you attack from here, your units have to go around a death corner, a death corner, a death corner. There's three kill zones to get in there. Serral right now going for that angle again. He will force the base to lift. He's trying to pee on the command center. The Ultralink runs in. Oh! Can he break the stream? He breaks the streams. Clem, very nicely done. The Corruptors have learned their lesson from the previous engagements. Saves the command center. I don't know if the command center matters that so much as it is mining from the base. Oh, Serral's attacking around the corner. He takes two massive Widow Mines and actually gets pushed back. Serral getting a bit of a stiffy there, getting excited. He throws away a bunch of units. He's got to keep his cool. There's so many more command centers behind this. Yes, you don't want to let him mine from this, but you've also got not going to throw your whole army away. Units lost have 21,000 resources in favor of Clem. Clem at 53 army supply versus 67. Uh, not that long ago, it was what, 40 versus 80, 50 versus 100? Serral takes a few pretty bad fights. He's gonna have to put back on gas mining, try and secure this bottom right base. And Clem has two mineral patches there. He's got 700 minerals and this base. So Clem literally can't build anything else, but Serral needs to attack from the right side. He keeps attacking from the middle. He gets EMP fungled and shot down. The infested doesn't land the fungal. There is a Viper somewhere on this map, but I do not know where. The Viper is at home. Serral's forgotten about it. It's not on a control group right now. The man has forgotten about it. Ooh, that is that is very, very rough. Uh, Liberator is coming in right now, being a bit of a nuisance. Clem here showing off his fanciest Liberator micro. The Spore Crawler of Serral getting confused and frustrated. <laughs> Clem being a bit of a dick. I love it. The Spore could move down one space. I don't know if it'd be in range or not, though. That Liberator being a big nuisance. And no doubt the Corruptors have to come here to get rid of it. Clem's mining, though. You can't be letting Clem mine like this. Those mules are coming in. A 34 drone Zerg against an 8 orbital Terran. The 8 orbitals will win. Corruptors do take out the Liberator. Marine Marauder starting to poke. There is still a bit of minerals up here. Uh, could Serral go for the production? If he attacks to the production, breaking the production is another way to do big damage. If you break the production, because his whole army's up here, he's got very few mobile units. But you've only got 30 Zerglings and an Ultralisk. You don't really have a ground army. It's all like Queens, Drones, Spellcasters. He's making more Ultras right now, is Serral. But yeah, the problem is if he ever gets stuck somewhere where he gets sniped and the Ultras disappear, all he has is a few Zerglings and Banelings. He's taken a few nasty Widow Mines in this sh game as well. Clem hanging on. Clem's, actually, Clem's got the army supply advantage. Serral needed to dislodge this high ground position, but he tunnel vision on denying the command center and he actually took a few bad fights. Clem, on the other hand, basically took the god tier desperate defense. Holy crap, look at the kills. 29 kills, 48, 55. Sergeant Chad Hammer times three. Holy crud. Uh, that is, yeah, that shows how effective that position's been. Fungal comes in, but he picks up. Corruptors will deal with it though expensive this loss 
Losing units like this in a low economy game does hurt. The problem is this is a fresh base. I guess if Cyril mines this whole base out, and this base over here, he might be okay. But where are his workers right now? I guess he's... He's got 37 workers. I guess he's just finishing off the mineral patches around his bases. But he's got to finish mining that base as well. So Cyril... Uh oh, he's going to lose these two mineral patches. Only about 60 work uh, minerals there. He doesn't have that many drones. So, okay. So this is just going to go down to the wire. It's, it's a cost efficiency game. The way Cyril's playing it is he doesn't want to throw units into the meat grinder. So he's going to just try and defend the bottom right. So you mine that base, I mine this base. Ah, the infester gets scanned. That The massive orbitals, the unlimited scan count's been so effective. Ultra's going to run in, but not worth losing an ultra. Get out of there. Get out of there, Cyril. He's going to lose that ultra. Oh, it's expensive. He's got to get that back to some queens for saving. He's got three queens. He's sending them north to transfuse. Okay, a couple more infestors are down here. Look at this, though. Clem's setting up a spread. A big spready. You do not want to fight into this as Cyril. Oh, he finds a siege tank. That siege tank does get deep in the red. Clem pulls it back. Nice micro. 22,000 resources lost in favor of Clem. Eight workers versus 36. Down to the wire. Cyril needs to mine this base out. Clem, if he can deny this base, he can definitely win this game. He's already up 30 army supply. And, and if he can deny this base, he, he knows... It's going to be great. And the thing is, even if he lets the base go up, if he just forces Cyril to defend it and take bad fights into the bio mine, that also is a win condition. Clem, man. He was completely dead. He was completely dead. He was on like, what was, I don't know what the supply difference was, but especially the army supply difference was massive. It was absolutely massive. On three orbitals, four orbitals, five orbitals, he definitely would have been dead. But it turns out with the 10 that he built earlier, the eight surviving... That's enough. He's making it very inefficient. Cyril cleans up a Widow Mine. He's got, he's got Infestors there, but... Oh, the, the Marauders! Oh, the Marauders! Kill the Infestor! The Widow Mine smashes the Ling Bane! The Blinding Cloud comes in. He's trying to break this position. Clem has an immense amount of bio, though. He lures him into the kill zone. These snipes on the Ultras! Absolutely ridiculous. The tank on the left, the tank on the right. 59 kills, 9 kills on the left. A bit of a rookie, but holy crud. Denies the base... Clem. Clem setting up some killer positions. And even though this map gets so spread out, this is why Alcyon can be good for Terran. Yes, your bases are spread far apart, but there are some sick ledges. Like, this ledge here is still just beautiful. The way he, he defended that position, absolutely stunning. But remember what I said earlier in this game, guys? 10, 20 minutes ago? Probably 20 minutes ago, I said, why is Cyril not mining this base? If he started mining this base earlier, transferred workers, when Clem was super turtled and Cyril had all the momentum, even if he'd mined an extra thousand resources out of this map, that means this base would be pretty much mined out now. Cyril would have an extra thousand resources. It's such a big difference in these late game, end game scenarios who, you know, if a Terran mega turtles, they not only have to spend 10 minutes building up their orbital count, they also can't really contest the map very much. Oh, the Infestors! No, Cyril! His Infestors get emp Clem, absolutely monster moding right now, showing some range as a player, some ability to turtle when it's necessary. Omega Fungal from behind! But it's too little too late. There's nothing to capitalize on it. Cyril has to tap out. Clem fighting back from the brink to keep himself alive. GG. All right, well, what the bloody hell did we just witness? Clem now going into Oceanborn. He's in the bottom right. Cyril in the top left. And this map's going to be a little bit better for Clem. A bit shorter. Not as much room. You cannot be letting Clem get to that turtled up point in the late game or he'll be uh, much more unstoppable than on Alcyon because the bases... I mean, the bases are still kind of spread, but I, I do feel like, you know, if you have that much sensor tower, turret, planetary, orbital... It's going to be hard to break. 15-15 for Cyril once again. It's really been favoring this opening in this series. Now, a few things from that last game I wanted to talk about. Uh, yes, Cyril could have improved things. Clem played a bloody damn good game from behind. What I was really weird is the Viking decision. Vikings, like that is such an odd choice. I've, I haven't really seen someone go heavy Viking to counter the Corruptors. Normally they try to counter it on the ground and it kind of worked for a bit. Then he took a few parasitic bombs Got them caught out once or twice, and they died very cost inefficiently. But it made Cyril build so many Corruptors. Cyril threw his Corruptors away really badly twice. So it kind of worked indirectly by making Cyril make a really ridiculous Corruptor count, and then Cyril was not 
as used to using such a weird army. He's like, why do I have 20 corruptors? So I guess I just keep attacking. Ghosts turn around, snipe all of his corruptors, and suddenly he's realizing he invested a massive bank into corruptors that if he pulled back earlier would have been huge value. Instead, they ended up being a massive overcommitment. Hash gas pool is on the way. We've got an SCV going forwards across the map. Clem playing safe and standard yet again. Oh, what a series, dude. I really thought Cyril had that in the bag. That's got to be frustrating. He might be tilted, though. I, I would be a bit frustrated, especially if he rewinds and realizes he was at, like, more than double Clem's supply. That's got to be tilting. That's got to be very frustrating. Like, <laughs> I would be mad. So now is Clem, all you need to do is do the Clem thing. Drop in the main, drop in the third, drop in the fourth at the same time, drop in the fifth at the same time. Stim on creep, stim back, stim on creep, stim back. Like, you know, basically, if he can get a bit of tempo, I, I can imagine several tilting um, off the face of the planet. Now, obviously, I say that Cyril's the kind of guy who we've seen grit his teeth and make crazy comebacks, crazy wins before, winning two maps in a row against Clem. It's something he's done before, and he could definitely do it right here. This is not being down 3-0 in a best of seven. Also, um, something I've noticed and talked about about Serral, ever since 2018, Serral has an insanely high win rate on maps that are favored for the opponent's race. His Zerg versus Terran on small maps and maps that his opponent picks is insane. I'm telling you, go back to Cyber Forest. Serral won every ZVT on that map. Go back to... Uh, you know, Cyber Force, Submarine, uh, Beckett Industries. He had insane win rates on all these maps. There is something about being in a bad position where he has to adjust his build and play extra careful to like stop the Terran momentum where he actually gets out of control. Now, other people will argue Oceanborn's not that good for Terran Pig. There's still plenty of wide open spaces. This isn't necessarily that amazing a map for Clem, but I definitely feel compared to some of the, uh, the big open spaces on Equilibrium and that, it's going to be much more favorable. And this is a 2-1-1, two, one, one, two barracks, uh, you know, so it's it's barracks into the factory, but he only builds a few Hellions, and then he goes straight back into second barracks and then a starport. So he's going to do a double medevac stim drop. Clem is bypassing the Hellion Banshee, Hellion Liberator stage to rush towards medevacs and stim marines. Those units that in his hands are very frustrating to deal with. Sarah looks like he's playing a Zergling style. If he wants to play Roaches, he'll need to start that Roach Warren very soon. Oh, okay. Serral's like, screw it. I'm definitely making Roaches. There is no way I'm playing against Clem without having the Roaches. I understand. I, I, I definitely feel the Roaches give you a bit of anchoring safety against a lot of problems that he can throw your way. No, I don't do Icy Fire anymore, Code Guru. Might bring it back at some point. Just got bored of recycling the same challenges for six, seven years. <laughs> Lair's on the way in the main base. Zergling running towards the ramp. Marines will shut it down. 50 drones for Serral. 10 more coming out. Ah, I wonder when you go Evo Chambers as Serral. Ah, he's going to play single Evo. Okay, so he's just going to go for a quick carapace to start. That is the more important upgrade. Fair enough. Double Engineering Bay goes down for Clem at a similar time. He's got his third Barracks on the way. Normally, you lift the third Barracks onto the Starport because you don't need to keep building Medivacs here. You've only got like 14 Marines. You don't need four Medivacs, right? So the Starport can lift off, start building Reactors, and then you can put the Barracks on that. Double Drop moving across the map there. Reaper Hellion hiding behind the third. I like that he kind of nestles them behind the Mineral Line. So if Zerglings attack, they'll naturally funnel into a choke point. Starport didn't swap. Definitely could be getting a bit of reactor build time in, but he is gas staffed. 1-1 one, one upgrade starting, combat shields, carapace on the way for Serral. Marines on the right side being deflected by queens and roaches. Seven queens, six roaches so far. Not a very big roach count. Serral building a bunch of overlords. Ling's going in for a counterattack. Oh, Juicy gets a couple of marines and an SCV. Might even kill some hellions because Clem attacks on the front. As always, Clem is so predictable. And not in a bad way, it's just the best defense is a good offense. Like, you counterattack Clem, and it almost guarantees he's going to stim his frontal army onto creep and pick a fight with you. And if you're not quick enough with your micro, he could really punish. Like, if Serral wasn't on point, 
Doesn't transfuse his queens. He might lose four or five queens there, and then the marines just start bouncing between his bases like mad. Nonetheless, a very effective Zergling run by, getting a bunch of SCVs, marines, taking the wind out of Clem's sails. Second Evo, Infestation Pit, and Banely Nest on the way. I really would love to see Serral mix in an Infestor style. I get Banelings are god tier, but uh, I, I would love to see Infestors instead of Banelings one of these games. I just think it's such a fun style, and he made it look amazing on the ladder when he did that a few months ago. Zerglings do take out a few units, bit of splash damage from the tank. Chad Hammer takes up her station on the high ground. Clem has his armory, perfectly timed again. He's been really good at remembering the armory. Pretty good at remembering 2-2. I haven't mentioned it, but he actually remembered concussive shells pretty much every game as well. Something which I've uh, I've made a bit of fun of him for forgetting a lot of the time. Queen goes down. Good pickoffs, man. Losing these queens is annoying. There's only six queens that shoot up. Serral is at a critical point where he's not rebuilding his queens. But that means if Clem starts multi-dropping on the left and the right, snipes one or two more queens, it's going to get out of control because Serral will not have any anti-air that can limit it. Single Infester on the way. Even if you play Banelings, but you just go three Infestors then for the Baneling Nest and Baneling Speed, I feel like it's greedy, but if you get away with that opening, especially off a Roach build, because you don't really need Banelings early with Roach Ravager, you're very safe with Roach Ravager. I feel like if you get those three Infestors gathering energy, the value to be gained is astronomical. Not a corner, though, that Serral wants to cut. <laughs> Not here. Not when his opponent could win if he loses this map. Serral needs to win two maps in a row. He wants the Banelings. He's going to add an Infestor or two, but it's going to be in the safest way possible. Remember what I said about double drops? There's still only six queens. Maybe an early Spire will be necessary. But for now, it's just Adrenal Glands, plus two Carapace, plus one Melee. Clem coming on the left side. Gets a nice cancel, and Fungal only hits a few Marines. Stops three Marines from picking up. I mean, it's okay. At least it kills something. It's not as much as he'd like. Fungal on the right could be big. Ah, oh, doesn't land it. Clem. I feel like Clem honestly is staring at the Infestors, trying to bait Serral into throwing the Fungal. And he's waiting until it, it, he sees the Infested through the animation, and then he does it. Clem comes in, cancels the base on the left. Vipers are on the way. I guess that's what Serral's going to use to shut this down. But these... Dude, this is... And another drone tries to go out there, and it goes down. Oh my god, look at, look at him! He's trying to bait the fungal, you disgusting freak! Clem, you're not meant to be able to do that. You know, it's actually insane, because I initially thought the range advantage wouldn't make a big difference, but it really has turned it into more of a skillful interaction. The fungal being one less range means it's very much a back-and-forth interactive dance, and Clem shows that he's a master of baiting out those fungals, dodging them, and not giving the big opportunity to land on his face. Really well played. Clem's efficiency off the chain right now. He's at two and a half to one. Serral needs to land something on these guys, but he doesn't have Burrow. The Ling Bane unable to connect. Good fungal. There we go. But the Marines do get saved. Loses a few Marines up front, but the Medivac saves the other ones. Another cancel on the fifth base. Okay, serral has got to be melding right now. Clem is being such a D-bag. He gets a queen. Down to five queens. There are two Vipers out, but look at this. High ground, low ground. High ground, low ground. High ground, low ground. My name's Clem. My name's Clem. I feel like at this point, you, you feel like you're just swatting away mosquitoes, but they keep buzzing around. Everybody knows when there's a mosquito in your room at night and you're trying to sleep, and just when you go to sleep, you hear that buzzing right in your ear. That is these drops right now. Clem is not doing catastrophic direct damage. He is stressing out Serral and is pissing him off. There's no other way to say it. This is frustrating. Another queen goes down. Only four queens. Where are those vipers? Oh, but watch out. Watch out. Clem out of position. Clem out of position. Blinding Cloud goes down. Parasitic Bomb on the medevac. He's going to lose the two tanks in the medevac. No, it was the other medevac that got Parasitic Bombed. He is taking a lot of damage. Bailing Ultra diving on top. Serral does not chase in, though. Clem saves a lot of his siege tanks. Dude. After, after getting mad, Serral jumps out of bed, starts trying to swat the Mosquito, almost gets it. If he got those tanks, that would have been huge. As it is right now, 90 drones against 79. Serral seems to be in position. Clem's going to pick another fight. Just kills a Baneling, picks up and leaves. Kills a Baneling, picks up and leaves. Frustrating to play against. But the Hive Tech is here. The creep is good. Serral has established control over this game. Now, that being said, Clem has a fourth. And he's going for extra command centers. Two more command centers here. Three other command centers. Holy crud. He's doing it again. He's just going to turtle, guys. Clem is literally just like, yeah, I'm just going to turtle. I, I, I wonder if Serral learns from the last game and goes straight for Broodlords or like starts mining this base and like maybe this base down here and steals the resources. Parasitic Bomb is massive there. 
He's got another one available. I'd love to see another Parasitic Bomb, but he gets EMP there. And Snipes going down on the Vipers. Banelings will get in the base, but it's a bummer to lose those Vipers. Planetary goes down. A lot of Zerg dies. Oh, the Punish. The Punish! The Stutter Step forward to Punish. Nice moves by Clem. 4,000 resources difference in the units lost. That alone is not the end of the world for several. He's got an Infestor there, though. Imagine if he had some Banelings to jump on that right now. Baiting the bio out like that could be so amazing. Liberators are coming in. It's time for Clem's special play, guys. This is what he's been adding in this tournament. He did this in the previous rounds as well. It is non-stop Liberator harass in the late game. He says, look, just turtling and sitting there doesn't feel that great. But if I go in a Liberator harass, I can cause some problems. And guess what? Serral's going in right now. He's going to lose the Infested to the Siege Tank. That is unfortunate. The Marauder's taken out. Liberator Sieges in the Natural Queens will deal with it. Liberator in the top base has gone unnoticed. There's three Liberators right now. And it looks like he's only noticed one or two of them. The one in the top kills a bunch of drones and then repositions to that left side. Triple drop going north as well. Clem realizes that Serral swapped into a defensive stance. He's going to sneak that drop over there. Liberator comes in, gets a bunch more workers, being a massive nuisance. Liberator on the south repositions. Clem playing like a bag of dildos right now, hitting Serral in the face repeatedly. It's very frustrating. Another queen goes down. He's only got three queens left, which means his anti-air consists right now of three queens and spells. And that is not very good. Loses another queen up there. It's only two queens. That tree goes down. The Liberator finally falls. The army comes north. He just picks up and leaves. This is a very big problem for Serral. He needs to get those Corruptors out. And I'd love to see a Great Aspire. Remember, 10 tanks, 9 ghosts. There's nothing that shoots up there. Marines don't count. They suck versus Broodlords. Ghosts are... Uh, it's, if you've got 15 ghosts, you can kind of deal with Broodlords. But you still need some Vikings or Thors to support. I really feel that Broodlords would be a massive game-ending play. Infestor Ultra can do it, but he's got to replace the Infestors. He's lost a bunch of them. And remember, he needs to chain Sequential Fungals. If we learnt what we did in that last game, one Fungal's not enough, Clem will still pick up. It's only when you get a second one as well. Infestor tries to pop up, instantly dies. Massive engagement, though! I think several might have the numbers to just overwhelm. Wait, there's a Planetary up there? Oh my god, there's a Planetary. More tanks. Another army coming from the south. And Serral is like, holy crap, mate. Clem is like, yeah, mate, do you like my Shrek cosplay? Serral's like, what are you talking about? Do you, you get it? Do you, you get it? Serral's like, I don't care. I'm just playing the game. Clem's like, we we have onions. We we have layers. We're like an onion. And Serral's like, you're you're really friggin' stupid, man. And also, it's it's 14 minutes and you've forgotten concussive shells. Um, Clem. Concussive shells, mate. Concussive. I, I was talking about in the previous game. He's remembered concussive whole series long. Here in game four, he's decided to go back to the trademark. Who needs to slow the opponent's army when you can just let them charge at you full speed, man? Bio coming forward. Serral's just got to set up some better infester ambushes. There is not an iron bank. Well, there is seven orbitals now. It's close to an iron bank. But he's got to set up some good ambushes. And I think he's got to wait for Clem to take a sixth base right now. Clem's on five, and, and he can just not be broken. He's got weight. He's way too entrenched. When he moves out to base number six here or down here, that's where you can deny him. If Serral could mine some of the resources on those, it would be huge. He definitely needs to transfer workers to that base and these bases because it's going to be tough, but still no attempt to go Great Aspire. I always say that if a Terran has 10 or more siege tanks, usually it turns out Broodlords was the way to win that game. Ooh, Serral, get out of there, mate. Turret's going to see him. Infestor's going to get blasted. And there we go. Cleans it up. Ultra's going to come in again. Serral's going to try and smash him. Mass Ultra, Ling Bane, Viper, Blighted Clouds on the planetary in the tank. Banelings crushing through the left side. Ultra's behind the mineral line. Banelings going after the building command centers. Not able to connect with the ghost, though. The planetary will go down, but the ghosts are going to punish. A bunch of those Ultras will get sniped. Pop, pop, pop. A couple of the Ultras go down. The rest are deep in the red. There's no Queens to transfuse. Those boys are not going to be healing up anytime soon. And that is a problem. Massling on the way. No Hydra tech yet, guys. He has not built a Hydra, and I'm surprised he's not going Hydra Ling Bane. Viper, since he seems to be playing that more mobile style. No Broodlords either. Serral's trying to get it done with Ultra Ling Bane and Festa Viper. It's a star which normally can do it, but Clem's defensive positioning has been ridiculous. And the moment he wins a fight, he counterattacks. Unseized tanks on the front line. Big doo-doo there for Clem. 
He's got another tank on that right side. There is more bio to the north. He denies the hatchery. Serral overrunning the position, but the pulling back is very good. Still not noticing that he doesn't have concussive. He's forgotten that upgrade. And there is an Infestor behind. The drop's going to go deeper. Infestor's going to come south. Ultra gets cleaned up, though. There is not enough Zerg to overwhelm. Not with the drop heading towards his main base. Infestor perving on all of it. Almost double efficiency for Clem. He has been off the chain. His efficiency in all of this series has been wild. I am not used to seeing this. I'm used to Serral keeping the efficiency surprisingly even. But this time around, it's like just, you know, this efficient and having mass orbital up is, is it's a foregone conclusion if Serral can't change the story of what's happening in this game. But he's being kept with, busy with Liberator Harass. The drops are being annoying. Parasitic bombs on the medevacs in the main base. Those are going to go down. And now the parasitic bomb goes down. It will kill the medevac on the left. The one on the right will barely survive, I believe. And indeed it does. Oh my god, getting a drink of water. This series has been absolutely epic and my throat is feeling it right now. Marine drop continuing to be a nuisance here. The lings will get on top. And those marines will fall. Does focus down two drones before he goes down. That turret barely out of range of that infestor. If it goes forward a pixel, that turret's going to see it and it's going to die real fast. And that's the only infestor though. It's mass ultra, seven ultras. I'd also want to see Serral split his army up and try to sandwich a little bit more. Oh, infestor from behind. Does get two fungals off on the medevacs, but the corruptors aren't there to capitalize. And despite all of that, getting some bio, two medevacs and a ghost survive. More command centers being built in front. I think Clem's been watching some Age of Empires streams, guys. Some Age of Empires 2 here. This man's walling off with just layers of houses, workshops, bloody... He's got the bloody, bloody castles in the walls as well. He's got planetary in front of a planetary, planetary in the right as well. And he's going to try and slowly move to that sixth base. Remember I told you guys the sixth base would be a bit of a conundrum, but he denies this one. Serral's going to try to mine out the bottom, but it's too late. Remember what I've said so many times over the last years. If you're playing against a turtling Terran, you need to transfer your workers to steal their resources earlier rather than later. You can't be waiting this long. But he's waited this long. Serral is only now doing it out of desperation. This is what I, I used to refer to as chucking Arena. Because Reyna was kind of famous for only trying to mine resources further forward once the Terran had already won seven fights in a row. Only going Infested Broodlord at that stage. Surprisingly, Serral is almost looking stubborn with this composition. And normally he gets away with it. I've seen him look stubborn with compositions and just take good fights and win. But I keep coming back to that unit's loss tab and saying, when has he found a good fight in this series? Only in the game where he was kind of overwhelming and dominating. But other than that, he has not been able to find any good engagements. Like there was the start of a good engagement and then bam, mass snipe kills 15 corruptors and you're, you've got the sad face just uh, down downwards grin the upside down grin the oh no snipe just killed everything the twitch chat copy pasta echoing in your brain thankfully terran's a high skill race that needs one unit to counter everything command center's building everything they can ultra bane link coming in infestors there he's looking for the ghosts i like the surround attempt here for Serral coming in with a big 270 can he get on top of those ghosts clem pulling back the lack of concussive shells not helping here parasitic bombs all over the liberators but man the ghosts fall back. The layers of tanks go way too deep. The Liberators up front, the layers of tanks behind, and it's the same story again. You cannot be attacking into layers of tanks that are that entrenched. Serral keeps thinking Clem is F2-ing his whole army forward. He's not. The man has learned. He's channeling his inner Maru right now. And if you don't go Broodlords, you are dead in the water. Liberators are out. Corruptors help against Liberators. But we are past the point of Liberators doing anything. Look at that. Even the Infestors getting EMP'd. The Ghosts showing absolutely no chill. Oh, he's even going to snipe some drones on the way out. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. And Serral just not finding a way in. Ultraling Bane is a fantastic army, guys. I've seen this a thousand times before winning against Terran. The reason it's not working is Clem's entrenched. Ultraling Bane is about mobility. It's about going, haha, there's no defense. Crack in here. Except there is defense. There's five bloody tanks and two planetaries. And that's the undefended side of the map. This map is too small. Clem's defenses are too good. Serral needs some sort of siege tool to break the entrenchment. He also hasn't been sending overseers around the bottom to get in the main. There's nothing really watching for that other than sensor towers. He hasn't been trying to go for Nidus Worms. No drops. 
Serral's been trying to smack him with Ultraling Bane, and Clem is he's ready for it. He is all over it. 18 Ghosts, 11 Liberators, 8 Tanks, 5 Marauders, and 8 Marines. You could argue that Ghost Count's enough to deal with Broodlords, but I think with good Infestor coverage, Threatening Fungals, the back and forth dance, it would be a micro war. It would not be a foregone conclusion. Ultra's coming forward. He gets the Infestor! Ooh, clean. Clem there swarms, uh, snipes the one the one slug out of the middle of the swarm. Bio Viking goes trying to pull back right there. Ling Bane Ultra coming forward at the same time. Clem trying to just force Serral into bad fights. He's down to 52 workers, but the man has 14 orbital command centers. Holy crap. Guys, I always joke about rich players trying to win by throwing their black metal Amex card at their opponent as if they're a goddamn retail worker or hospitality, some sort of service person. Right now, Clem is at the point where he can literally buy the home of Serral. I know Serral has more money in the bank right now, but I'm telling you, that is an endless line of credit. 14 orbitals is literally if you're best friends with, with Jeff Bezos and you're like, hey, Jeff, I forgot my wallet when you're out at the movies. And Jeff's like, oh, no worries, I gotcha. And he gives you a billion dollars just to tide you over until tomorrow. And you're like, thanks, mate. I'll get you back tomorrow. 14 orbitals is obscene. He has unlimited map hacks. He can scan literally 4,000 times a minute. Not exaggerating at all. Scientific number. Actually crunched it. Watch out, though. Watch out. Clem, Clem, Clem. Infestor cut gets in there. Gets a fungal. The bailings are a little bit far behind. Oh, he gets a few ghosts. But once again, he saves them. The Corruptors do take out a bunch of libs, which is a nice move for several. But, I mean, I've got to check in on that unit's last tabs. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's for the Zerg players out there. Oh, oh, a little bit of some volatile, uh, acidic, uh, you know, um, coming back up. That Wow, wow. 17,000 resource difference. It's not quite two to one, but it's not that far off. This is devastatingly efficient. And you add to that the fact that there's layers of orbitals and planetaries. And it's crazy because Clem has played pretty much nothing but a crazy aggressive Biomine Ghost style where he just attacks all game for the last six months. And now here in a big Premier Land tournament, he's like, by the way, guys, I can turtle as well. And we're like, what? You can't do that. And not only can you not do that, but no one expects you to do that. They haven't practiced against it in a long time. Serral's going for one more break, but he's funneling into a goddamn avenue of death. He can't even break the first planetary. There is a row of orbitals. Clem right now is blocking him with his shopping trolleys. The man has built a, a, a wall of security uh, to, to block off. Uh, the fans cannot get close. Serral is absolutely shut down at this point. He just can't get in there. His bank is expiring. His resources coming in is equal to Clem, but not for long. His minerals are going to mine out in the next few minutes. There's no way he's going to get much more mining on this base. Clem, at the same time, is securing a northern base. Wait, no, sorry. One burrowed Zergling giving the middle finger over his shoulder. But dude, Clem's efficiency is just off the chain. And Serral is, is looking a little bit stubborn. I got to say, a little bit stubborn. It's a very similar scenario to last game. Just Clem mega turtling and Serral trying to get it done with Ultraling Bane eventually adding Corruptors. But the lack of Broods is a really big issue in my opinion. I know Broodlord's got nerfed. Maybe in Serral's custom games, he tried it and just didn't ever work. So he's stuck with this dial and he has no faith in the Broodlord, but... Broodlords, I think, is where it's at. It's either Broodlords or be a bit more explosive when he's building all these commands and is uh, you gotta get in there and kill Clem before he gets it. You cannot just be letting a Terran build 14 orbitals, five planetaries, two other He's built like probably 25 command centers this game. Right? Because he's lost at least three, not to mention the ones he's had to cancel. Ooh, ghosts get caught in the open. Nice catch for several. Guys, can Serral win this game just because he's still got so much bank? I don't know how he still has so much bank. I guess Clem spent his entire bank on buildings. Oh god, he's got to be careful. He threw away a few ghosts. Y you, you cannot risk this as Clem. Surprisingly, Serral didn't split a few units. I thought he'd pee on that base or send some ultras. The mule hammer! Oh, oh the income tab. Oh god, the income tab. Only 46 workers and yet he's mining 3,500, 3,000 minerals a minute. Going up to 4,000 as those mules deliver their second and third trip. Whew. Serral's minerals are mining out. He's running dry right now. Trying a long distance mine on that bottom side. Plus two ship weapons coming in. That's a lot of ghosts to send forward. You might be wondering, isn't he worried about getting caught by investors? But he has literally unlimited scans. Despite that, he gets caught by a fungal! But he needs to land something on the medevacs as well. Those medevacs every single time. 
Clem gets the ghosts out of there. Nice parasitic bomb on those Vikings. The Corruptor's fighting the libs, but the bio ghost holding the line. The planetary and the snipes, the ultras get ripped apart. Who the hell designed, designed ultralisks with a soft underbelly? Did Abathur read The Hobbit and go, oh, I want to design them like Smog, where there's a little... We're going to have a missing scale underneath so the goddamn guy can shoot an arrow into it? Why is a goddamn sniper rifle able to kill a space cow? It's not fair. I'm kidding, guys. I'm making fun of the comments that are no doubt going to be there. That was perfect play by Clem. And Serral just could not handle it. The units lost tabs in this series, if, you, if we tallied them up, I feel like it's like 130,000 resources lost advantage to Clem. I mean, Serral lost way more units. Every fight was not going his way. Clem showed really expert knowledge of walling off turtling and a style we haven't seen in a long time. Even from Maru, the guy that really pushed it forward, which is mass orbital. He had 15 orbitals. Don't get me wrong. I do think 15 orbitals is too many because it gives you less minerals in case you make some mistakes to, to kind of quickly recover with. You know, if he took one bad fight and didn't have any minerals, he'd probably be regretting the last three orbitals. But that still is amazing play for Clem. And I'm, I'm just impressed, guys. I'm, I'm really impressed. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series. And hats off to Clem, because beating Serral here on LAN, he's never beat Serral on LAN. He's never been into a Premier Tournament's Grand Finals. He's only made it to like Home Story Cup Finals before at LAN. And he almost always underperforms, feels he can't play his level. His mates, he's mates with Serral and Rainer. They themselves say, we don't feel that Clem really plays to his level at LAN tournaments. Beating Serral at a big live tournament, on a big stage, getting to the finals. This is a monumental moment in his career. And honestly, what can we say? How do we summarize this? Hell, it's about time. We've been hyping Clem up for a long time. We've known he's had the potential, but I love that he switched styles, played against his style here throughout this series. And uh, man, that last game, coming back from 80 supply down, 70 supply down, beautiful, beautiful. He set up the layers of defense. He let Cyril attack into it. I'm bloody impressed and I'm super hyped. GG well played.